Welcome to my vlog, my video blog. Um, this is where you can keep up with the films I'm making, the articles or books that I'm writing. Uh, you can find out stuff that you may be curious about. For example, that I have a new kippa or um, yarmulke or hat. Uh, the other one was falling apart. We get a lot of emails about where we can get them. It's not easy. The other one was from Bukhara. Uh, and uh, that's in Uzbekistan, and I couldn't find one that fits my big head. But finally, I have this knitted one, brand new. You wouldn't know that in piece of information except on my vlog. Besides talking about my hats, uh, we're going to give you information that may not make it into any book or film. Let's say there's some extra stuff that somehow didn't work in the film, ended up on the cutting room floor. This really cool stuff, we're going to upload it, put it on the vlog. You know, I, I don't want this blog to be, or vlog to be, uh, um, defined by naysayers, where I'm reacting to naysayers. Uh, I think it should be fun, and I think we should learn stuff, and I think we should provide a forum for people who have out-of-the-box ideas. At the same time, I, I want to be me on this vlog, which means that if there's a story that should be front-page news around the world, and uh, a kind of C-list scholar bloggers have managed to discredit both the story and the people who brought the story to the world and it just disappeared. So suddenly you have what should be an earth-shaking discovery discussed by everybody that suddenly is marginalized and just thrown into the garbage. Um, I'm going to allow myself to get upset. And, and I'm upset because we, we live in a world that is seemingly free until you touch some people's theologies. You touch uh, uh, some Muslims' theology and they write and they, they, they threaten people, you know, they're going to come after them and get them. Uh, you touch some uh, uh, Christian theology and uh, next thing you know, you're out of a job, you're discredited, everybody talks about it, you're in for the money, you're a forger, you're this and that. We, we, we have to open things up. I don't care if you're Jewish, Muslim, Christian, we, we got to be able to talk in an atmosphere of freedom. It's called democracy, and it's a good thing. And it really upsets me as a filmmaker and as a journalist, as a human being, when... Uh, um, those freedoms are threatened by people uh, demonizing and marginalizing uh, uh, the individuals and the ideas that they don't like. So, uh, you know, let's start with, with our discovery, the discovery that I made with Professor James Tabor and Professor Rami Arav. I mean, I believe we've made a very powerful case uh, in the film uh, on the Jesus uh, discovery. Uh, also known as the Resurrection Tomb Mystery. And in the original film, uh, The Lost Tomb of Jesus, I think we made an argument, a very viable argument, that we found the tomb uh, of Jesus and his family. I mean, it's a good argument. No one's really answered it. I mean, you have a bone box there that says Jesus, son of Joseph. It, you know, it doesn't say George. It says Jesus, son of Joseph. Now people come and say, well, lots of people call Jesus, it's not a big deal, lots of people call Joseph. Okay, but you can't just throw it out. Lots of people were called Jesus, including Jesus of Nazareth. Maybe it's him. Uh, lots of people called Joseph, yeah, including the father of Jesus of Nazareth, so maybe it's him. Uh, there's a Maria in that tomb. There's a Maria. Ave Maria, like the mom. In Hebrew, the letters Mem, Resh, Yud, He, Maria, M-A-R-I-A. Hey, coincidentally, that's just like Jesus' mother's name. Yeah, but lots of people were called Maria, and lots of people were called Miriam. And it's not that important. Okay, but it's pretty significant. I mean, if I say to you, hey, do you know George from Toronto? Yeah, but there's lots of Georges. The guy whose dad is named David. Oh, yeah. You know. We now assume we're talking about the same person, but maybe not. Maybe there's more than one George with a father named David. Does he have a sister named Susan? Yeah. Well, that's it. We know we're talking about the right, right guys. Maybe there's millions of people in Toronto called George with a father. It's not true. Now, you could argue about it. 
but it should be an argument in an atmosphere of sanity. Instead, what you have here is we found the tomb of Jesus. We brought statistical evidence. We brought archaeological evidence. We found, bought, brought DNA evidence. We brought uh, uh, um, uh, iconographic evidence. We showed the early signs of Christianity, the fish, the sign of Jonah. All of it dismissed. None of it discussed. People attacking the messengers and nobody's talking about it. I'm truly amazed. I'm not amazed that people disagree, by the way. If people from a point of faith say, I don't want to believe this, that's fine and actually I respect it. Faith can trump archaeology. I have no problem with that. But don't pretend that you're arguing archaeology. Don't pretend that you're a scholar and that's why you're not accepting the archaeology. Just say, I'm a person of faith and I don't accept this. Great, you're out of that debate. But that's not what's happening. What's happening is the discrediting, the lack of discussion of what is arguably the most important archaeological uh, find, maybe ever, by people who haven't really argued the facts, what they've done is attack the messenger. And that bothers me. It bothers me that independent discussion is uh, um, dismissed as sensationalizing Da Vinci Code, they're in it for the money, and, and uh, um, theological agendas masquerading as academic agendas manage to stifle and discredit both the messengers and the message.